Hey now, happy, happy vibes, my friends. Welcome back to my podcast, Vibes by Alicia, where I believe in spreading killer vibes that light you up and give you that kick in the ass to craft the life you wish to live. This sacred space is dedicated to the lovers of all things business, travel, and lifestyle. Hey, it's about time you get the scoop on the latest vibes, so let's get to it. Guys, today I'm super excited to have the pleasure of presenting to you my gynecologist, Dr. Daisy Ayim. Dr. Daisy Ayim is board certified by the American Board of Cosmetic Surgery and by the American Board of Obstetrics, Obstetrics and Gynecology. It's a Big, big, big deal. I can't even say it. Wow. She completed her medical degree at the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston in Galveston, Texas, and she completed her residency in obstetrics and gynecology at Howard University Hospital in Washington, D.C. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Ayim. Yeah, thank you, Alicia. Dr. Ayim is not only a gynecologist, but she's also a cosmetic surgeon. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. She is a OBGYN. She is a business owner. And she's also an entrepreneur. Yes. But not only that, she's revolutionizing the integration of women's health and cosmetic care. So something that not very many people have because you do come from both fields. Yes, I do. I do. I love that. <laughs> and that's why I'm so excited that you're here today because you know what? Um, I've been wanting my listeners to get to know you. Oh, thank you, Alicia. Yeah, I think if anyone has um, the right perspective, the right, the, the correct um, modalities for teaching and instructing and giving us um, some really good information, I think it's you, Dr. Aim. I would like to think so, too. Thank you for inviting me, Alicia. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I appreciate you so much. So um, I have a really wonderful audience of young women. I mentioned to you earlier that the women who listen are between 25 and 55. They're all working really hard at building their careers. They're very much, you know, hoping, um, you know, to to achieve achieve a level in their career, but they're also wanting to become mothers one day. So that's why the conversation is is leading there because, you know, in many of the conversations that I have with the women in my, in my, in my listenership, you know, they always talk about, you know, I wish I knew how I could preserve my fertility or how I could preserve um, my years because obviously they're growing their careers and something you know very well about um, as a doctor um, and, and something that you probably come across in your practice all the time. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. So they're taking a little longer to find partners or taking a little longer to get married and have their families. But I really want the conversation on fertility and modern fertility to be talked about a little bit more openly. Correct. Yeah. So I feel because there's a little bit of a stigma on fertility. There's a little bit of stigma on infertility. I don't think a lot of people talk about it. I know when I was younger, I'm 46 now, but I remember when I was in my 20s, um, we didn't really talk about fertility or when when we wanted to have kids. We just kind of assumed that we would have them when we wanted. And one day we would get married. You know, it was just kind of yeah. assumed that things would just kind of work out. Um, but nowadays women are just thinking things a little bit different. I think they're being a little more proactive. They're thinking about, um, things associated around them, their environment and how that can affect them, you know? Yeah. And I read an article where you stated that the future of your field is more preventative. Correct. And I want you to talk a little bit about that because it's, you said it's more preventative than curative. Correct. Your your clients are coming in. They're a little bit more savvier about their needs, um, and the science has fulfilled the, the the desire for them to learn more and to know more. So, what do you think that's attributed to, Doctor Ayim? You know, I think what is really attributed to is just lifestyle, right? Okay. Um, with time passing, we're now in what twenty twenty two. Women are more educated. Women are more knowledgeable. Women are more desiring of what they want. So that desire comes with putting the foundation, whether it's in education, in career, in mm -hmm. school, whatever it takes to get there. So uh -huh. that's the shift, right? And the perspective of a woman has changed. You know, you can be a housewife and still be a businesswoman, right? Right. You can be a businesswoman and be um, unmarried. You can be married with kids or not kids. So yeah. the dynamic of what a woman is is so complex just because time has changed and I think it's changing for the better. Okay, tell me about that. Why do you think it's changing for the better? Because my audience, they 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 feel fear. They feel like it's not going to happen. It's not good. It's not. It's it's. There's a lot of anxiety going on. Well, when I say it's changing for the better, I think it's giving women voice. 
Okay. Right? You're having a voice to speak for what you want. And the context and the environment is receptive of that voice. So that's why I think it's changing and it's getting better. But the fear, I think, comes because things are moving so fast. Mm-hmm. Men are not stopping to horn their natural self. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? Because we're not in this uh, time frame where, you know, by 25, you should be already married and have mm-hmm. one or two children, mm-hmm. you know, so you can really get caught up just in your day to day life, busy doing whatever you're doing, right. you know, being in tune with the changes of current time. And then the next thing you look, you're 39. You're like, yeah. wow, how did I get here? <laughs> I am not married. I don't have any kids. I don't have this. I don't have that. And you want those things. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you start realizing, oh, maybe time is of essence. <laughs> Do you find that in your practice, a lot of women are coming in and, and, and asking those questions? Yeah, I do. Even I, before they have kids, because I think you see them once they're pregnant. Right. Well, or do you see them before? I see them before, during, after Mm -hmm. all, because, you know, I am a women's health expert. So I see girls as young as 11, 12, all the way to 80s plus. Mm -hmm. So I get all variety of women, uh, women, I should say, in all walks of life. So Mm -hmm. I get that a lot. And the common denominator for what I see is that you're just so caught up with trying to Mm -hmm. catch up with the catching up of life. Right, yeah. whether it's school, having a job, or career, or living in a city that's very expensive, and just trying to get your finances together, so there are all this real life stuff that you're concerned about. That by the time you want to say, "Oh, I need to be a mom," mm-hmm. you might be too far out. So, okay. what I do in my practice, yes. and I really make this a personal thing, is before thirty. Any young woman that comes to my office mm-hmm. just for her annual exam or just whatever's a problem visit, mm-hmm. when I'm doing the history intake, you know, if I notice they've never been pregnant, mm-hmm. I always ask, do you want to be a mom someday? Do you want to have kids someday? Mm-hmm. And I ask that question as an opener okay. to kind of introduce them about thinking how to embrace that thought as they're navigating their journey. Right. Gotcha. And I usually throw in that whole preservation of eggs or thinking about a partner or I'll ask them, are you married? You know, Mm -hmm. do you have a significant Mm -hmm. order and are they interested in being a kid? That's part of that whole social history intake to get an idea of who Mm -hmm. this woman is in front of me. Right. And an opportunity for me to just kind of throw some bugs in their ears. That's what I call it. Mm -hmm. Just triggers. That way, right. when they leave, they're kind of like, you know, in the quiet moment, they're like, you know, but she mentioned something about this. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should start thinking about it. Because that's all it is. I think women are just so moving fast. And you may be in your circle of girlfriends. And yeah. you guys are speaking the same language, but you're not speaking the language that needs to yeah. propel you to have all the things you right. want, especially motherhood. Right. And I think the fact that you're a woman, number one, and number two, that you're a mother I think it gives you a really good perspective and some insight in how um, your 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 clients are coming into you to your practice and talking to you about things because I think they feel a sense of comfort that you get it and yes. you understand where they're coming from. Um, and I think that's one perspective that I think is so important in terms of like going out there and talking to their 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 providers is really having a moment to sit down and speak to you. And I know. F- from personal experience, because you're my doctor, is that you do spend time with us and you do spend time trying to sit there and listen in and talk to us about what's going on in our, in our life. And that is so important, right? I mean, our personal life, our environment just affects every single thing. It does. Um, And so in terms of preserving fertility, for example, are there things that women, I guess, early on should not, should be doing to make it a little, I guess, to just to preserve it and to keep it, you know, keep it going. healthy and going. Right. Because yeah. they're not ready to have children, but they want to make sure that everything is in good working order. Yeah. I mean, there are things you can certainly do. You know, the best thing I always tell my patient is, you know, to have your well check all the boxes. What is your well check? Physical. Yeah. Finances. Those two things are so important. Mm-hmm. Right. In your physical, you want to be in your best shape ever. Your entire life. So start young, start early, because it makes it really easy when it comes to reproductive health, when you're ready to have children. Now, as you get older. And does, I'm sorry, does that mean like a weight and like, 
Does that mean like not be overweight? Does it mean like be physically active? Correct. Work out, that kind of thing. All of that. All okay, of okay, okay. You know, I know yeah. we live in a very positive, you know, body, body positivity um, mindset right now, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Mm -hmm. But please do not get that confused with being healthy. Okay. I'm okay. so glad you said that. You have to be so healthy, glad. you know. And so, yeah, I promote those things, but think about your health because obesity affects so much mm -hmm. and it affects your fertility. So starting with that, just making sure your Beautiful. nutrition is mm -hmm. on point, you're dieting at some point. And when I say dieting, don't do those yo-yo diets. I don't believe in none of that. I do believe in all three food groups, but using it sensibly. And then, of course, just mentally being part of that. That's part of it. Now, going to your actual anatomy, you know, as we get older, as women in yeah. our 30s, you know, around 37, you know, our ovaries. Okay which contains our eggs, ladies, mm -hmm. start drastically depleting. Okay. And when you get in your 40s, it, it just takes a nosedive. Now, there are some women that naturally conceive later on in the 40s, but that's not the most common thing. Okay. So I do think that early on, especially that late 20s, start thinking about egg pre uh, freezing. Start thinking about preserving your eggs because that's one thing men have over women is they can have a child. At 99, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we cannot, right. at least biologically, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have to start, at, I say around 25, if you think at some point you want to be a mom, yeah, you're not sure, you're just casually thinking about it, right. you have not formalized a plan, it's okay. But think about preserving your eggs, okay? And that's where you need to start with a gynecologist like myself, mm -hmm. who naturally will send you to a fertility specialist, which mm -hmm. is more subspecialized than we are. Mm -hmm. And they can totally, you know, go into it about preserving your eggs. Now, there's some cost factor in this. So that's why I said financial preparation is important. Right, right. Because you have to start saving and mm -hmm. planning. You know, this is not a cheap process. It can cost you anywhere ballpark you know five to ten thousand dollars you know mm -hmm. just to preserve your eggs and it all depends what part of the country you're in and all mm -hmm. those things so you really want to start saving so do you think that the sooner they start to preserve the eggs better because of the quality of the eggs yes is that why 25 makes sense yes i think 20s you know the quality of your eggs and the amount of eggs you can get in one trial okay you know okay. so if you do an egg retrieval let's say in 26 you're more likely to get so many more, like, I don't know, like 30s, you know, whatever mm -hmm, your mm -hmm, condition mm -hmm. is, as opposed to if you do an egg freezing right. at 39, where you get less. Yeah. So you want to do it early so you can get a lot more for your bucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, and I don't think we talk enough about that. Mm -hmm. I think the, the talk always comes to, well, now I have to do infertility treatments yeah. because I wasn't proactive because I didn't take care of those things very early on when I could have taken care of them. Um, and then so many people assume that, you know, once you want to get pregnant, you'll just get pregnant. Yeah. Um, and it's not so easy. No, it's like a 20% chance for you to conceive. Right. Um, monthly. Now it may look like everyone around you is getting pregnant left and right because you know, you want to be pregnant all of a sudden all your girlfriends mm -hmm. are getting pregnant mm -hmm. and you're like, yeah, you're like me? hypersensitive <laughs> at the time. Yeah. 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 But it's not because everyone's getting pregnant besides you. It just so happened that that moment you're so in, in tune with wanting that stuff and yeah. it appears that way, but it's only a 20% chance. So ladies, if you're having a monthly cycle every month, that's a good sign that you're ovulating, which means you're producing X, which means you can conceive. Mm -hmm. That's just a general kind of uh, perspective to have. Now, when you go to try to get pregnant, the factors that can you know, decrease the ability for you to conceive spontaneously right away. So you want to plan ahead of time. Let's mm -hmm. say, you know, if you want to get pregnant for January, you need to start early just in case, you know, mm -hmm. there's some mechanics that needs to be uh, checked. And and how do you think that birth control affects that fertility? Well, it doesn't, you know, being on birth control for many years or a short time frame doesn't mm -hmm. affect your fertility at all. You okay. Know, despite the perspective that's out there. Yeah. There's a lot of studies that indicate that, you know, it does because it really tricks your body yeah. into thinking it's pregnant and it's really not. And so it just doesn't, it has to like relearn. Right. This is a, a study that I read. It has to relearn how to ovulate again. 
Well, no, what birth control is doing is suppressing your natural ovaries from doing what it does naturally. Okay. And therefore, it's maintaining a sustained uh, level of hormones in your body, which prevents you to become pregnant. Okay. Once you discontinue the birth control pill, your body naturally takes over and you continue as is. This is assuming that you don't have any underlying medical condition. Right. Now, if you were on birth control pills for a specific condition, then that needs to be addressed. Um, and that's afterwards. different. And that's totally different. Okay. So this conversation is for the healthy woman that just wants gotcha. to delay pregnancy and she's healthy. You get a birth control pill and you stop. Now, if you have a condition like, say, PCOS. Right. You know, I was just going to ask about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a different thing. Okay. And that's more of a hormonal imbalance. And um, I know that that's one of the leading causes of infertility. But, you know, before we get to that, I wanted to ask you about something completely um, related, but something that's just been popping up more and more on my Instagram. And it's something that's probably out on social, social a lot more. And that's taking fertility hormone tests. Yeah. What do you think about that? What is your opinion on those? Like there's one called modern fertility. Yeah. Um, it's like a little finger prick and it tells you your ovarian reserve, egg counts, reproductive timeline, thyroid health. Is that, what do you think, Dr. Aim? To me, it just seems a little bit like it's, it's a trend. It's very right. trendy and kind of not in depth. Right. Superficial. I always, yeah. You know, I mean, those things are very catchy and it's very, you know, easy to just jump on it and get on yeah. it. I really caution that whenever you want to do something that medical, you really want to have a physician, your gynecologist standing with you okay. during that process. Go and consult your gynecologist and let them be the one to initiate those testing for you. Because when you get those numbers back, what what, does what that do mean? they mean? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody has to interpret them for you. No? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've not done one of those tests, but I'm sure they probably have like some, at least I would like to think they have some kind of reference what those numbers mean, mm -hmm. but then what does that mean besides that reference? So mm -hmm. that's where your physician comes in place. You really need your physician to be right next to you, explaining that, giving you options, giving you treatment uh, perspective and how to proceed. Gotcha. Yeah. So, ne so not necessarily bad, but not necessarily your go-to. It's best to consult yeah. a doctor. Yeah, it's kind of like mm -hmm. going to Dr. Google. <laughs> <laughs> oops webmd that's what i go to <laughs> webmd is a good content resource is it you know? okay it's I mean, not so bad there's a lot better than dr google <laughs> <laughs> oh good okay 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 so i'm not doing so bad yeah i mean the whole idea of reading i think is good when patients read right but understanding that you need a physician to kind of put that knowledge into perspective Okay. So I do appreciate when patients read because I think it makes the visit more engaging. Mm -hmm. um, it only becomes a downfall if a patient takes that as the Bible to their journey. Yeah. Then that's when you may find that a little bit uh, complicated. Yeah. Because I think, uh, and I feel like for a lot of them, they want to just hear good news. Yeah. And if it's not so good, I, I think they want to not, not deal with it. That and also most of the times, you know, when you go on this uh, uh, search, uh, search engines, most of the information that's there is never really positive, especially yeah. when it comes to fertility. It's and not. Women. It's so awful. And I've, yeah. been, I've been looking at them researching, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's not encouraging. It's you not know, encouraging It can at all. really make you feel sadder than how you should feel. Yeah. So that's why when it comes to fertility and women, I just say, please go to your physician because we can look at you, we can do some studies, we can give you guidance, and we can give you an idea of how to approach it. And, you know, so young, when you're young, start early, start saving, saving your money, start thinking about preserving your eggs, mm -hmm. start thinking about being extremely healthy. Mm -hmm. You can never be too healthy. You know, if you feel like you're healthy, we'll do more. Be healthier. Be healthier. Yeah. If you think you're drinking lots of water, drink more. more. <laughs> if you think you run four times a day, run seven times a day, you know? So yeah. There's always room to grow. I, I agree. I think information is so powerful. So let me ask you a little bit more, a, a little bit of a more controversial topic just because it pops up a lot. And, um, and like I said, I have young women that send messages to me. And one of the messages that I got very um, recently was um, the, the, the girl who, who sent me the message, she says, you know, me and my friends have even considered that we would pursue a motherhood on our own. Yeah. That we wouldn't even wait to be married. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I think they're calling it, you know, being a single parent by choice. Correct. I know it's a little more controversial because I know that, you know, traditionally, you know, you want to be married and then have mm -hmm. the kid and that kind of thing. But 
a lot of women nowadays are saying, you know, they don't feel like they need a partner. And so many are competing for partners out there right now in the single scene. You know, there's, I, I hear it from, from, from so many of them, you know, there's like one guy and that one guy for like 10 women or something like that. He and, has options. <laughs> <laughs> so he's not so inclined, you know, to, to become partnered up with someone. So these women are, I think they're taking it matters into their own hands and saying, you know what, literally I can definitely go be a mother on my own. Yeah. What is your perspective on that? And should they be um, looking to, to, to also preserve their eggs, looking to, I don't know, what is, what is, the, what is, you know, that is a very um, interesting question uh -huh. you just asked me. Yeah, but so, I get, I got the question. It was yeah. one of the questions that we got. Wow. So I'm going to answer that question from a physician standpoint. Yes. <laughs> and then I'll uh, answer it probably from a personal standpoint. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, the physician take is that, you know, when life gives you what it gives you, you have to do the best, right? And if you want to be a mother, there are ways to become a mother. Being a single parent by choice is one of those ways. You know, you can literally preserve your eggs. Yeah. You can go to a fertility physician. They have a sperm bank. You can preserve an embryo. You can pick the father. You can do so much to improve your choices in what you want. So, yes, that's something that you can totally do. If a woman wants, right? Right. So it's there as an option. And if I have mm -hmm. a patient that presents to me and say, hey, Dr. Aim, I want to go this route, I am totally supportive of it because that is an option that is there for you if you want it for yourself. Correct. Now, on the personal take on that, you know, being a parent is always better to have both parents. You know, um, I think it just makes the parenting journey better, right? Mm -hmm. And both parents bring something that the other parent cannot bring mm -hmm. into that upbringing. Now, because we want that, is it what you have? That's where the, the whole Correct. play comes in. And I get it. I, I have many, many friends that are also very single and also wants to be mother and also looking for a mate. Mm -hmm. And it is um, a very tough place to be right now because the selections are not much slim pickings <laughs> some slim pickings you know <laughs> and 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 i also think by default you know we as a society we're just growing to be more independent you know this unilateral type of push and in, right. in living and and there's something great about that and something really terrible about that i feel so yeah so realistically, I guess if they do want to take that route, they definitely need to prepare for it now, just like you mentioned earlier. Yes. Yeah, Financially prepare, but emotionally. Um, yeah. But from a realistic point of view, from a, and I know because, yeah, um, I, 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 I'm married. So I know that my life as a mother is, is so much easier because he's involved. Correct. And because he takes on some of the roles and some of the discipline and some of the things in, in the rearing of our kids, you know, they're both the boys is a balance it is balance. it is and it really makes my life easier a little bit a little easier as a mother you know and so that's a def that's a really good point to yeah. make because yeah it it definitely adds a level of anxiety and a level of stress if you are on your own raising a kid it, it does and you know and the thing is you can have money and you can mm -hmm. become a mother you can buy the house you can buy the cars you can put your kids through school right you can definitely do all the things that financially will put your kids in the best of the best. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, it doesn't replace that balance. And that's something that I think when I'm having this conversation with my younger uh, patients and they want to go that route, obviously my push is, you know, get a partner, you know, have some balance, you know, start doing it early, you know, start when you're in college, you know, that's the, best time to really meet a mate because yeah. everybody's young and trying to kind of define themselves you know once you get out of college right. you're in the working environment so your pool just by default narrows and as you go further in your career and especially a woman that's very successful yeah you meet less and less and less the type of men that will compliment you Absolutely. are less just mm -hmm. because one they're either taken or just not there so you have to be very intentional as a young woman in your 20s to want those things for yourself and put yourself in a position to get those things early. Wow. This is like really, really good advice. Yeah. Really good advice. And women, we are multitasker. We know mm -hmm. how to get what we want. So if you feel 
I want to be married. I want to have a family. I want to be a mom. Mm-hmm. If it's a remote thought in your 20s, mm-hmm. start planning those things. So what things should we start removing from our life if we, if, if we, for example, just as an example, um, smokers. Yeah. Removing that you know, removing environmental uh, factors from your life that might affect your fertility? What it, what could those be, for example? Well, you know, bad nutrition is it. You know, smoking is one thing. Alcohol. I get the question of marijuana for, for from, from the young ladies, by the way, because they say it helps with my anxiety, but I'm worried that it's going to affect my fertility. Yeah, you know, man, marijuana is one of those topics that is very kind of like going through this gray zone. Okay. <laughs> Although, you know, there's not much scientific uh-huh. data to say it's contraindicated because contraindicated is a very strong word. Okay. I think using good judgment is probably the way to go when it comes to usage. Okay. You know, uh, what does your good judgment tell you? Right. Probably not a good idea. So don't do it. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. 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 But it's a question that pops up all the time because some of the young women that I've spoken to, it's a way for them to cope with yeah. anxiety, societal pressures. Um, they are on a, on a trajectory that is intense. Mm-hmm. They're in school. They're working part-time or they're working full-time while they go to school full-time Correct. a lot of them are are on fast tracks you know what i'm saying I mean, right. you're a doctor so you do understand this it. component right so for them it's like it's it's like a it's like a relief yeah. but at the same time i worry that it's going to affect me and my 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 chances of being a mother in the future i always say that you know there's choice and consequence right right so if your anxiety is your problem, there are so many ways to get that relief without necessarily putting yourself in the bad consequence of your choice. Okay. Running is right. a natural high. Working out is such a good yes. way. Yeah, that's how I deal with anxiety. Yeah. I mean, you release endorphins. Endorphins are happy right. hormones and that would by default make you happier. So the ways that you can channel your anxiety to really improve your health and get the results that you need later in life. So, yeah, I mean, it's a very uh, tricky, tricky thing. You know, being a woman these days, you know, it's amazing. You know, we're doing so much. I see so many successful women running their businesses, even running the household and being the breadwinner. You know, the traditional model of the man being the breadwinner, you know, you've seen that depleting as time is going by. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, you know, maybe because Mm -hmm. women are now (laughs) go-getters and allow the opportunities to be in the space to get it, right? Whereas before... You might be a go-getter, but you are not in that space. Yeah, there was always a roadblock. There was some obstacle that always came out and yeah. came out. Five Plan DCS Season 5 is sponsored by SNR Creative. Are you putting your money towards visibility but not seeing any change or business growth? Well, that is the problem. SNR Creative is a boutique marketing and business development firm in Houston that specializes in turning your ideas into reality in the most creative way possible. From social media management to website development, graphic design to event management, this full-service creative team does it all. The world can't go on without your services, so let's make sure everybody knows your name. You're either fascinating or forgotten. What will you choose? Get ahead and above the competition by contacting SNR Creative with the link in my bio. Mention Vibes by Alicia and receive a free business consultation. Vibes by Alicia Season 5 is sponsored by SheSpace. Hey you! Yes you! Badass hardworking boss. If you're tired of cliché spaces, of the regular and unimpressive, you want to add a little bit of spice to the shared co-working experience, I have just the place. She spaces the hub for bold women. It's the queen's throne away from home. I firmly believe in the proximity principle, which refers to the intention of surrounding yourself with the people who embody your ambitions to achieve them. Find that proximity and experience the dream job life here at She Space. With membership, you'll have access to a multitude of amenities, a robust calendar of events, and overall a group of like-minded women. So what are you waiting for? Come and see us at She Space. Fives by Alicia Season 5 is sponsored by Finest Blood. Finest Blood provides patients and partners and clinics with service at its finest. Avoid mixed diagnosis in unprecedented times and commit to laboratory services in the finest way. Whether you are participating in mobile or in-lab services, 
We will provide you with the finest care and make sure your satisfaction is met. No more waiting long hours in clinics. No more waiting long hours for results. No more leaving the comfort of your own home, if that's what you choose. At Finest Blood, our system is designed to alleviate the challenges of accessibility and timeliness of lab work while providing exceptional customer care. We provide you with the best, best care in anything that we do. Come and see us or follow us at finestbloodllc.com. And I think a lot of the things that are changing now is because women are just asserting themselves a little bit more and just being more intentional about where they want to go and what they want to do, what, what kind of life they want to live. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of the young women that also, um, you know, posted questions as I was going to talk to you, um, one of the things that pops up a lot is not just fertility, but it's overall sexual health. Mm -hmm. And so one of the questions that one of the young ladies had is, you know, she wants to preserve her fertility. She wants to definitely um, be a mother, but how does she, how does she obtain pleasure if she's, uh, you know, also worried about the fact that she doesn't want to get pregnant? I mean, is there, for example, is there, is, is, is it, is it mutually exclusive? Yeah. Well, you know, it is, you know, you can have all of it at once. <laughs> You know, I mean, contraception, you know, there's more than contraception, yeah. whether it's the pills, the Nexplanon, the IUD, the condom, the condom, which you is, know. you know, more men are using it as well. Right. Well, that's the men, the men use it. Yeah. The men use it. But I yeah. tell my female patients, you need to have it with you. Yeah. Because in case he doesn't have it, you pull it out. Right. Right. It's an equal right. opportunity right now. Mm -hmm. So you can prevent pregnancy. You can enjoy sex and you can have it all. You just have to be very intentional in planning and making choices that doesn't get in your way of what you want. Mm -hmm. So if I was her, I would tell her not to worry so much. You know, you you have options. You consult your mm -hmm. gynecologist. She'll give you the different options to prevent pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And you can have a great time sexually. You know, and the question that's very related to that, she said, how do you obtain pleasure with increasingly faulty reproductive organs? Hmm. I'm not sure exactly what she means by faulty reproductive, reproductive organs. Well, the pleasure sexual pleasure in women comes from mainly the glitoris you know okay this arbitrary g-spot that we have mm. but it's mainly external in the outer part of the vagina vulva area so that is not really considered quote-unquote reproductive okay um reproductive when you're thinking about that is more on the line of your ovaries your fallopian tube gotcha your uterus so it's a great question, but it's sort of mixing two anatomy into it. And I'm trying to separate that. Yeah, I think her question comes from, you know, she suffered some of she and she maybe not her, but, you know, she says they suffer from vaginosis. Mm. So if now what if talking. sex? Yeah. What if sex is, is hurting her, but they also want to achieve pleasure? Oh, OK. Now we're talking. Yeah. So that is a very specific question. And uh -huh. vaginosis is just sort of like this discomfort you have in the vaginal opening. Um, usually just trying to have intercourse is very un uncomfortable. Um, you know, whether it's during penetration or just with touching, something causes some sort of discomfort with vaginosis. So her question is great. And the way to treat vaginosis, obviously, I always say start with your gynecologist and consult visit. But during that visit, we try to identify the triggers and work with you. You know, there are solutions for it, whether it's um, dilators to gradually improve um, the sensitivity of it, um, whether it's due to dryness, you know, we can do something to help with that as well. That will really improve um, how the woman responds. Um, so there are options that she has with that particular condition. And it's a very challenging one, you know, because... It inhibits the very beginning of a sexual act. Yeah, and you know what? I think the conversation always, you know, we 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 put out the the thought about fertility and infertility and all of that, but you know, there's always a component where women want to just be healthy sexually, yeah. in 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 a full you know way without feeling like um they're compromising. 
yeah. any opportunity to to further maybe have children as they as they come along. Um, so here's another question that um, another one of my listeners posed, and she says, "For those who wish to have children but cannot have sex because of different issues, I mean, there might be some issues. How can they proceed with the process without resorting to IVF or in artificial insemination?" <laughs> I'm assuming that they are open to having children that yes. is not biologically theirs. Okay, maybe it's not. Yeah, maybe you know, that's what they mean. I'm assuming because the only way to really have a kid that's biologically yours and you're having difficulty, you may have to go through those routes. But if it's a non-biological child, you know, you could always have an egg donor. You could always have adoption. Okay. You, know, you can marry it into or have a partner that has kids. Right. <laughs> so it's sort of like this bonus kid. So... I think that's where her question is. Should they invest in their reproductive health as young as they're young and they're or uh, no, this is another question. She says, should I invest in my reproductive health if I don't want to have children? I will humbly say yes. Okay. And why do I say yes? You know, sometimes in our 20s, we're very sure about what we want. I'm assuming she's in her 20s. Even sometimes yeah. in your 30s, you're kind of assuming that you know what you want. But life has a funny way of giving you something that would change your perspective. Right. I mean, look at the pandemic. Who knew that we'll yeah. be in this shutdown, right? Right. And I think during the pandemic, the lesson got out of that was, you know, if you ever remotely desire to have a family, it really made you feel like, gosh, I'm alone. Because you were so locked true. wherever you were. So true. Now imagine if you had made all this decision to not have a kid and then this happened and then you're like, oh, I really want to have children or I want to be a mom. Then what? So I always ask my patients to give themselves grace okay. and allow themselves space to not make anything final until life makes it final for you. Okay. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, if she was my client, I would tell her, you know, don't be so final in your perspective on that but some women are and that's okay not every yeah. woman wants to be a mother yeah that's fine not every woman wants to be married that's fine correct but if you remotely have those thoughts in yourself then i would say give yourself space very good very good um how about a reversible method such as a vasectomy but for women <laughs> well, if yeah. they plan to have kids what is that is that ever an issue is that something that can happen like a vasectomy for a woman yeah it's called tuber ligation so we tie your tubes oh so there is something like that yeah, and it can still be reversible i mean it is reversible but you know you have to remember why you're getting your tubes tied which is to destroy them make sure you can never use it again right okay so when i go in as a surgeon my intent is to make sure that it cannot be functional because that's what you have consented Correct. to uh -huh. now so if you're in a process where you change your mind you want to have it reversed you're not dealing with a normal anatomy on anymore. So it may be successful or it may not. It increases your chance of ectopic pregnancy, meaning that the pregnancy occurs and sort of gets stuck there in the tube and doesn't travel all the way down to your uterus. So you can have a tubal ligation, you can have it reversed, but the outcome is really unpredictable. Wow. What is one understated and underestimated piece of advice you could give young women on their fertility and their sexual health? Something that doesn't get talked about a lot. And you always think, gosh, I wish more women knew about this. I would say you have options. Okay. Just remember you have options. And as a woman, there is um, fortunately a time limit on what you can do naturally. That's not to put any pressure on yourself. But by preserving your eggs young, you sort of buy yourself this lifetime of freedom is what mm -hmm. I call it. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you get in your 40s and you're not a mother, even if you don't want to be a mother and you kind of thought about it and life gave you that, mm -hmm. you just have this peace of mind. You know, it's like, you know, I could have it at 50 if I want to, you know. Right. So I would say, yes, give yourself options. OK. So that you can breathe better as you grow. I love that because that's very realistic. Yeah, it is. You know, I mean. And, and, I, and I speak this from personal experience. You know, I am very um, open about this to my patient. I have had my ex uh, frozen mm -hmm. when I was ooh, 37, 17 of them. <laughs> and I'm a mother. And mm -hmm. just because when I was young, you know, my, my mission, or I, I wanted to have many kids. Okay. It was my desire to have that. Now, after one kid, I paused that for <laughs> life. Oh, one teenager, right? right. <laughs> that makes you rethink everything. <laughs> I think, yeah, well, that pause happened when she was way younger. But when when that pause happened, uh -huh. 
this is not what I planned or predicted for my life. And that's why I tell my patients to give yourself grace because you can have a very clear idea of what you want, what you desire, and then life gives you something else. So be super self-aware of your life and where you want to go and your goals. Um, I think I know that's this is a conversation that comes up all the time because I think women are thinking I'm very driven. I'm ambitious. Um, This is my this is my role right now in this company, but I plan to climb that corporate ladder. Mm -hmm. Every step you take, every move you make is a decision that you're making towards that lifestyle that you want for your future. And if you want children and you want kids to be a part of your life, um, you have to start making that determination and making those decisions now early on so that, you know, again, you have that peace of mind. Correct. Um, So many of the women that I talk to, they're on a very, like I said to you, they're in a fast trajectory. They're super driven. They're ambitious. They're the women that don't let anything stop them. Um, and they do not want fertility and the lack of, of children be um, a detriment for them. They want Correct. them. They have a goal. They have the plan. You know how women sometimes set like these goals and they have these visions yeah. or like a vision board. And there's like two or three, four kids. Yeah. And there's, a, you know, the gorgeous husband, the house. And so many of them are coming to me. And they're like, gosh, it's taking me so long to get to that vision board. Yeah. Um, so there is time. And so for you, it's something that you really do address. It's like you you have those options. It's realistic for you to start thinking about them now. Yes. Think um, about it. And, you know, I know this is maybe not popular, popular opinion or not, but I know when women ask me and they're young and they're married, um, I always say to them, have your kids while you're still young. Have your children while you're still in your 20s. Um, because for me, honestly, it was it was easier to get pregnant and I had the energy and the, and the, and the stamina to, yeah. to keep up with my kids. Absolutely. And now as a 46 year old, I have an 18 and a 13 year old. And to me now my life is just so much more calm. I get to do what I want. I get to do what I need to do for myself and those things. But those early years, I was, I had the energy to keep up with those kids, those two boys. Correct. You know, um, there's something to be said about the older generation where women married young, had kids young. Yes. Because it was just easy. Yes. I mean, in many ways, you believe in God and creation, you know, those things just naturally happen when you're younger and your body bounced back, you're back to yourself. So there's a lot of positive in having your children younger. I had my mm-hmm. daughter when I was 27. Mm-hmm. You know, looking back, that was probably the best thing that mm-hmm. I did. You know, maybe I should yeah, have Yeah, for had myself more. too. Right. Now, with that said... There's some mental preparation and mental toughness and better parenting also that comes with being an older I, mother. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> there really is, you know, because you've lived, so true. you've experienced, and I think you come with more grace and more gratitude in that journey because you have achieved so much other than this. And then this is so meaningful. Whereas when you're younger, you're just trying to hustle and bustle. You're trying to put so much things together. It's such a meaningful and gratitude thing, but you're right. just not really seeing it because you're just right. trying to build. Yeah. You're, you're in a building phase. Yeah. And yeah. that's okay. But mm-hmm. a woman that's having children in her late 30s or 40s, she has built. Now she's really appreciating the True. building, if that makes sense. It does. It makes so, all the sense in the world. I yeah. mean, for me, that's what I do. I look back and I think, okay, I'm grateful that I did that early yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. And I took those 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 responsibilities early on. And now I do look back and I look at what I've built and what I'm building now. Yeah. Um, it's a very good perspective. Dr. Aim, I know that also one of the things I want to talk about to, to you, because we've talked about fertility, we've talked about preserving um, our fertility, our sexual health and having pleasure. Um, but one thing that I want to also mention to my audience is that you're also a cosmetic surgeon. Yeah. I am a triple yes. certified cosmetic surgeon. <laughs> and you are trailblazing something very interesting because I think you're one of the few people that actually know um, cosmetic surgery and you have years of gynecological background. Yes, it's a rarity. I it mean, is. Um, so you really do understand a woman's body and it's in the anatomy and what it all entails and your experience just kind of leads you in a, in a very interesting perspective. And people can see you as a doctor, as someone who knows the inside and outside. Yes. Right. I call it beauty inside <laughs> out. Yes. You know, uh-huh. because aesthetic world is all about external, you know. Yeah. Gynecologic world is all about internal. And I feel both are very much a beauty perspective. So you need to be beautiful inside, healthy, 
and Google outside aesthetic. So I blend those two and it's such a treat because I love it. Yeah, it is. You know, my client base is women and women, we love beautiful, beautiful things, uh, right? Yes. So it just made sense to bring in health, wellness and beauty together in one perspective. Now, it took a lot of re- uh, training for mm-hmm. me to have this triple board certification and a lot of testing and tenacity that most physicians have not even endured themselves. I'm not sure if you I want mean, to do wow. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know, who wants to put themselves nope. through all of that? Dr. Yin, tell my, tell my audience your background, though. You are from... By birth or? Yeah, by birth. Cameroon. I was born Cameroon. in Cameroon. Yes. Cameroon. So, I, and also you bring in an immigrant's perspective. You yes. bring in not just the, that, that woman, the doctor, the professional. You have like a, like cultural. A, oh my God. It's like a conglomerate of things that you have experiences and skill sets that I think a lot of women don't consider when they go look for a doctor, especially like a cosmetic surgeon. Yeah. You have all of that wealth. Yes. And of, it's experience it is and you know it's a very important thing yeah. a, what i love about being in houston and, and other places is so international I and it's it so global mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and that woman sitting across talking to me i have to look at her in her entirety she's not a one-dimensional person you know i have to understand where is she from how did she grow up what does she want what does she look like? What is yeah. she thinking? Yeah. And I think just being uh, from a worldly perspective is really important because it allows you to look at that woman as mm-hmm. a whole eunuch. And there's so mm-hmm. many uh, dimension in it. And I love blending cosmetic surgery with women's health. It has just been a natural fit. Uh, my client, my patients, I love it. Yes. And I'm enjoying it, too. Yeah. And I know it's a bit nutty to do all three. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. If I have someone call me for <laughs> delivery. <laughs> right. But. No. And you're, you're a busy woman. And I, I know if people follow you on Instagram, y'all need to go out there. And it's Dr. Daisy Ayim on Instagram at Dr. Daisy Ayim. She will show you. She will go into, I mean, I've seen some of those <laughs> things. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. But you have liposuction, body tight, face tight, Votiva, which is yes. a, explain Vagin- that a little bit. It's vaginal a vaginal rejuvenation. rejuvenation. So that really helps your sexual health. It's really good for your fertility. It's really good just to make you feel good. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. you need to enjoy life. And then of course, incontinence, if you have that. Right, right. Uh, Brazilian butt lift is something you also do. (laughs) I do it all. We can sculpt the body. How do you get rid of a Brazilian butt lift? Because I have one and it's natural and I don't want it to be so big. I'm like, like, are you sure you want to do that? I don't want to pay for that stuff. No, listen, my husband loves it. That's all I can care about. That man loves me. Um, Labiaplasty. Yes, yes. Which is something that um, I don't think a lot of women think about or maybe are a little ashamed to ask about. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's considered a cosmetic procedure yeah. because, you know, it's something that is not a necessity, meaning that you don't have to do it like any cosmetic right. procedure. It's just whether you want to. And the yeah. main reason is usually it's too long. So it's getting in the way. Okay. Like, you know, wearing your swimsuit, you just look like you have a lot of budge down there mm-hmm. or just during intercourse, you know, the, it gets in the way of sex, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. And just, you know, you may not like the way it look. So, yeah, it's something that women seek to have that done. I love that, Dr. Ayim. Thank yeah. you so much for that. Um, your your wealth of knowledge, your experience, your advice to the ladies out there. A lot of my listeners have such um, a curiosity yeah. and such a, uh, a, a quest for knowledge and to know more and to be informed okay. of their decisions. Um, I get the, que- like all the questions I got today, they're my listeners. My listeners are interested in knowing more about themselves, learning about what, what they can do to, to be the the best, healthier form of themselves. And if yes. anybody knows that it's you, Dr. I because you exemplify that. Mm-hmm. If you all follow her on Instagram, you will see she works out. She's at work. She reads, um, she visits the arts. I mean, she's a worldly woman to the next level and someone that I deeply admire and someone that I look to, you know, and I'm grateful that I, that I have you as my doctor because, um, the next time, to- the next topic <laughs> we're going to have and just get ready for this, because it's going to be menopause. Cause, uh-huh. Um, I think you and I have had this conversation before, I'm um, behind you, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've just been 
experiencing some really crazy stuff these last few months. And uh, my husband, Russ, was like, well, you've got Dr. Ayim. You got to just ask her about it. And I'm like, okay, honey, we're talking about infertility or fertility right no, now. I think that's a great, <laughs> great topic. But that's the next topic because it's something that I, I'm encountering and I feel like I'm encountering right now. And just based on some of the, the conversations you and I have had. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're not alone. I'm I'm 44. And, yeah. you know, one of the uh, beauty of being a women's health expert is yeah. I go through 90 <laughs> percent of what I practice. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It is I the most that. amazing thing. And that's yeah. why I went into it. It yeah. felt very easy to be an obstetrician gynecologist because I'm learning about me. Mm-hmm. And truly, that's why I went into it. And it's easy to be a cosmetic surgeon because I like to lead by example. You know, you are absolutely somebody that does that. Yeah. You exemplify all of those traits that I think some of us are just looking to achieve and reach those things in terms of like, you know, elevating and yeah. being excellent at what you do. You know, I, I have one passion in life. If uh-huh. I had to pick one passion, it's very simple. Be your truest and highest self, whatever that is. Right. And so if you put that into perspective in anything you do, you will do, you obviously achieve it because you're trying to be your truest and highest self. I sound like an Oprah right I agree. now, but no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you are totally on point. Yeah. So it's been a pleasure. You know? Thank you so much, Dr. Ayim. So y'all need to follow her at um, her website is uh, Dr. com, And you will also see some of her um, cosmetic procedures. If you want to go in for that, you do consultations as well. Right. Um, she's in the West Side, but she's available for for new patients. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're always taking new patients. Our cosmetic services are complimentary. So you can call the schedule. You come in. Obviously, I do Zoom because we're now in the Zoom area. Fantastic. But I prefer if you had to make one come in because I think yeah. that physical presence really matters. That one-on-one. And she handles face, breast, body, skin. I mean, everything. She is there and she handles all of those things. And so y'all need to look out for her. And also, please follow her at Dr. Dacia Yim on Instagram. She's got the most amazing Instagram account because she really puts it all out there. Um, and we get to know her in a really, you know, beautiful authentic self and i i love that about you dr Aim. thank you what you see I'm on so there, grateful. guys is what you see in real life there's no filtering there's yeah. no curated perspective it is just what it is it is who you are yes correct i love that <laughs> thank you so much for being here today everybody if you have any more questions for dr Aim, please be um comfortable in sending them follow me at my instagram advised by alicia dm me your questions i know when i put this topic out there i got the most amazing questions from my listeners and some of those you know you were able to hear today and if you need to go back and rehear something please use this as a format for learning use it as information this is something that we're here to do for you and just to inspire you as well and you know it's like she said the options are out there you know get ready learn about them and um visit her if you need anything done thank you thank guys. you dr Aim. 